Following the release of the House Intelligence Committee memo on Friday, Donald Trump Jr. said the memo was, quote, a piece of sweet revenge for his family in proof that the entire Russia investigation is built on a foundation of sand. Donald Trump Jr. joins us tonight. Thanks all for coming on. How you doing, Tucker? I'm doing great. So what was your reaction to the memo? What do you think the takeaway is? Well, listen, I think the takeaway should that be that Americans should be a little bit scared about what's going on right now. I mean, when you hear this stuff going on, you don't think of this happening in the United States. You right. don't think of this happening in a country where we have a foundation of laws and principles grounded in the Constitution. Because this, to me, seems like a clear violation of that. You have a court that virtually no one knows anything about just haphazardly granting uh, full surveillance of American citizens, in this case, the duly elected future president of the United States, based on shady information paid for by the opposition party's candidate in that presidential race. I mean, this is crazy stuff. It, it does seem outside the bounds of what the law was written to allow, yeah. and yet it is allowed under the law, and that law was just reauthorized by the Republican-controlled Congress with very little debate. Why do you think that was? You know, I don't know, but I think they probably want to revisit that after seeing all of this. I mean, a lot's changed yeah. since we last spoke about this basically 10 days ago, and that had happened just before this. But I think, you know, as an American citizen, to see this stuff going on, to try to subvert democracy this way, based on these characters and these people who are so biased, and flagrantly so, uh, that is scary. I mean, it's one thing if you're doing it in a sort of bipartisan system, but that's not at all what we have here. So this, uh, all the things that we're talking about were committed by, allegedly committed by employees of the executive branch, which is now the Trump executive branch. Yes. Um, so what's, what's the solution going forward? How do you fix this? You know, I, I don't know. I think we have to open everything up. You know, listen to the Democratic memo. I'm sure that'll be a winner, given that Schiff is doing this and everything he's been spreading for a long time. But you can see the fear in their eyes, because the one thing is we've always been in a very one-sided battle, right? Because the Republicans can have their talking points, and there is bias there, obviously, as well. But when you have the mainstream media so willing to sell for the other side, so willing to go to battle for anything the other side says, so willing to take whatever they say and just say, you know what, that is the gospel, there's nothing else that could contest what this person is saying, that's where it starts to get scary to me. So I say open it all up. But let's see the FISA court transcripts. Let's see everything that went into this. Because I think once all of that comes out, not just the rebuttal that they've had weeks to be able to say, this is how we're going to counter it, but let's right. see those court transcripts. Because I want to know what that judge saw when they reauthorized it. All this stuff was based on Carter Page, and yet it was reauthorized numerous times after Carter Page was not even a part of the campaign anymore. So what is their basis for the ongoing investigation? So the rebuttal memo uh, that you just referred to, the Schiff memo, the House Intelligence Committee has voted to uh, declassify it. That's going to the president. Presumably we'll, we'll all get to see it soon, and the media will applaud um, it's declassification. Well, they did have not their applaud, talkers and they will run. But they did not applaud the declassification of the Nunes memo. No. Was it striking to you to see reporters argue for more secrecy that the public doesn't have a right to know? Uh, I, I had a field day with that one on my social media accounts because it was the first time in history where I'm watching the media effectively argue for less information. And, you know, touting the talking points. This is going to make it really difficult to investigate people. We're going to be giving up trade secrets. People, I didn't see any of that in the memo. I didn't see a thing. But those were the shift talking points to try to prevent it from ever coming out. And the media was more than willing to carry his bags uh, to make sure that everyone knew that those things were going to happen and the sky was falling uh, if this memo was released. Huh. But none of the people calling for it to remain classified in the in the press had seen the memo. So no, just of course, well, but you know, who, who knows what they knew, what they had seen, uh, what right. they'd be given. I mean, it's not like there hasn't been uh, leaks like a sieve uh, from various members who were part of that and who had seen it. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did know. But uh, presumably they were not supposed to have known those things. No. So what's your take on Carter Page, who really was at the center of that memo, which described how the federal government spied on him? Um, based in part, anyway, on allegations in the in the dossier. What do you, what do you think of him? Well, listen, I, again, I, I think the whole thing's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, this is a low-level person who worked in a campaign. This is someone who I've seen the emails where they said, well, this person's no longer working on the campaign. I believe one of my family members responded, 
who the heck is uh, that individual? We'd never even heard of him. So to use that, again, as the basis to then try to attack the duly elected president, to do it then after that person's no longer even part of a campaign. And now I've been on a campaign. I've, I get it. All of these people kind of hang around and everyone wants to build up their next thing because it means right. they're going to get a better job on the next campaign. They're going to get their book deal. They want to be a part of something. The reality is... Uh, he wasn't a real player in the campaign. So to utilize that person, I mean, they seem like a great patsy for that. Uh, you know, I'm sure others were utilized the same way. But the reality of the situation is that we've had an investigation going on for over two years where there is zero evidence. We haven't seen any investigations into all of the shade, all of the stuff that has gone on with our opponent uh, that were actual real things that had happened, that she was involved in, that transpired. There's not even an investigation. But you can take a fringe person on a campaign, utilize that to get all these FISA warrants, to spy on someone who'd ultimately right. become the president of the United States, to continue to do so based on evidence paid, by, paid for by their political opponent, given and weaponized by the sitting administration yeah. at the time. I mean... What about this doesn't reek of a banana republic, uh, Tucker? It's crazy. Doesn't sound very American to me. Don, Don Trump, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Good I appreciate it.